Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a very special edition of Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast. I am your host, Corey Dierig, and alongside me, as always, from the place of work, the wise Wisconsinite, Mr. Working Man, Jesse Douglas. How's it going, everyone? Uh, yeah, so Jesse is joining us from work, so if there's a, there, there might be a little background noise, just FYI. He's calling in from his cellular device to talk to me and none other than the joy of the EXP cast. The joy of Wisconsin. Man, there is no joy. There is no joy in my voice right now. Man. You are joyful. You are. You, you, no, I'm not. I'm mad. Are you? Because you're Plus smiling three pretty big. Plus three hours of progress. I'm laughing at myself. <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. I am joyful. I'm joyful. Look at you. Smile, Stoy. Smile, smile for the camera. Smile for the audio. <laughs> there, I'm smiling. Uh, it through. So the joy is still. <laughs> so this is this this is coming out the night before the uh, original episode that we recorded, uh, just to get it out as fast as possible. Today was the 20th anniversary celebration uh, presentation from Xbox. Halo turns 20. Xbox turns 20. The Rock's hair was removed i don't know it's uh it was a good presentation and uh, first i want to get everybody's thoughts on on the presentation overall this is i don't know how long this is going to be maybe like 20 30 minutes i'm not sure probably we always say that and then it goes on to be like three hours long not trying to do a three-hour show but uh <laughs> mm-hmm. so i'm going to go your way first how what what did you think of the presentation what do you how do you feel I felt pretty good. It, it it did bring back a lot of feels, um, and this was it, it was reminiscent to our actual episode because we talked about some of our favorite memories of the Xbox and you know the the first Xbox, the 360, the One, all that stuff. And it was really cool to kind of go back and see a lot of the um, a lot of the footage from the old uh, system release days and um, some of the uh, the conventions. Like I remember. Uh, Phil, they played that clip of Phil Spencer at E3 where he announced backwards compatibility for Xbox One. Mm-hmm. I forgot about yeah. that, and I remember losing my mind because all of a sudden, once I saw the list, I pulled those games off my shelf. I was like, "Let's go, let's put these in." Yeah, you know. So it was, <laughs> it was really cool to kind of relive a lot of those kind of memories that uh, Xbox, for you know, with Xbox, like it was just really cool. Yeah, um, there was a lot of games added to my. Uh... <laughs> Added to my queue today uh, on games you own <laughs> because yeah. a lot of them became because they were like backwards compatible on the 360, but not the Xbox One, and now they're backwards compatible on the Xbox One and Series X now. And it's like I went from like 293 games to 309, <laughs> so it was awesome. Hell yeah, because they just all of a sudden dropped, uh, you know. Uh, backwards compatibility has always been the cornerstone of their future so it's always like you know you got to appreciate the past so it's really cool that they still support this mm-hmm. so um you know and not only are and it some wasn't games just that like currently out right now yeah uh getting a first person uh, like a frames per second boost but they just dropped like 70 other games yeah 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 i, yeah. I was gonna say i that. remember go ahead oh, Jesse. i was just gonna say really quick i remember too like you know, like it was such a big deal when they made uh, all the original Modern Warfare games uh, backwards compatible, and like every every local uh, used game store was like sold out of them like instantly, yeah. because everyone wanted to go and get a hold of those again since they could play it again. You know, and that was before before I believe the the remake of Modern Warfare had come back out and stuff. So, yeah. It was, you know, it was such a big deal yeah. for a lot of those games that, you know, were a big staple for the longest time in people's life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> backwards backwards compatibility was, like, such a big moment, like you said, Stoy. And today they, like, kind of, kind of put a big, huge bow on the backwards compatibility program because they did come out and say afterwards that... Uh, They've reached the limit on backwards compatibility. It was a it was a quote. I'll, I'll read the quote here. It says, "While we continue to stay focused on preserving and enhancing the 
the art form of games, we have reached the limit of our ability to bring new games to the catalog from the past due to licensing, legal, and technical constraints. So they've basically almost brought everything forward that they possibly could have. And uh, that's a that's a great feeling to know that they at least tried, you know? And, mm-hmm. and to cap yeah. it off with, what, 76 games getting backwards compatibility, another 33 of those ga- of existing games getting frame rate boosts and enhancements uh all the gears of war games now are 60 frames a second which is cool yeah uh yeah oh so many oh, i wonder I'm so how excited. that's gonna run because I, I wonder how that's gonna run I'd, I'd just be really curious like to just pop those back in my system again to see like even like dragon age origins yeah huge fan of dragon age origins so and i'd be curious to pop this in and see what a frame rate boost would look like with it mm-hmm I have I have one question because I'm guessing you guys like actually looked at the list. Yeah, I have yeah. the list right in front of me. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I I hadn't actually gotten a chance to look at it, but what what made me like kind of curious, and I wasn't I'm not expecting that these are going to be on that list. But did they also bring some Connect games forward? Uh, <laughs> they they brought games. Okay, so yeah, that was my thought too, and I looked it up. And these games are you can play them through Connect, but also you can play them on the controller. So some of them were uh, uh, Toy Story Mania was the one that caught my eye. That said, this is a Connect game. Like I can't. How do they yeah. bring this forward? You can play it on the controller. I looked because it was also a Wii game. Because I had it for mm-hmm. Wii, because it's based off of the Disney World attraction uh, of the same yeah. name. So, uh, let me see. There is one other one that caught my eye, too. Uh, was was Reketeer on that list at all? I know I've been wanting that uh-uh. to come forward no. for a long time, uh-uh. but I doubted it, yeah. No, there is one other one. I can't. Oh. If I find it, I'll bring it up, but... Uh, you know what? You know what game really excited me though on this backwards compatibility list that I know nobody likes, and every time somebody brings it up, they they're just like, no, no thanks. Is uh, is binary domain? It was like man, <laughs> se- it was Sega's like Gears of War clone, straight up Gears clone. Oh man, that was so oh, bad. It, no, that. it was so bad. It was good. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on the list, and I was like why this one like yeah. this was universally panned i liked it because it was so damn corny yeah but yeah i remember playing the demo and it was like really it was like i don't know it felt like it felt like people think gears of war feels like like these big clunky dudes with guns like and like they took up like half of the screen this camera wasn't zoomed out far enough but it, like the dialogue was like really bad. It was it was so good. It was bad, or it was so I, bad. It was I, good. You'll you you'll be surprised. I actually liked this game. I I actually possess it. So yeah. I will uh I will probably pop this in. Yeah. <laughs> the one game, the one game though, that didn't make it. That I'm really sad was Alpha Protocol. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. I mean, I have it on the PS3, so I can always play it on my PS3. So yeah, but you really want to bust out your PlayStation 3 to play that thing? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of plugged in just in case. <laughs> just in case one day I wake up and I want to play uh, Alpha Protocol. It's sitting there. It's ready. Gotta, yeah. The, gotta get a glass case for it with <laughs> one of those little uh, metal mallets that you can break the glass. <laughs> the uh, breaking case. Breaking case of uh, extreme nostalgia. The other game, Jesse, was uh, was Mini Ninjas is on here. Yeah, that's okay. an interesting one. So that was uh, I think that was the other Connect game. So I have okay. a feeling yeah, I have I a feeling that you guys are really trying to dance around the real the real what? game here. Max Payne, Fear, no. Dead or Alive. No. Blood in the sand. Blood on the sand. Or on the sand, yeah. The ultimate co-op <laughs> experience for the 360. You can play as 50 Cent and DJ Who Kid going through war-torn Iraq to get a crystal skull, man. It's like 50 Cent, 50 Cent meets Indiana Jones. Come on. <laughs> meets Gears of War. Meets helicopter bosses. Oh, dude, that game was like that game was actually legitimate, like a real gears clone like it was straight up like it felt good to play you know like yeah. it was like oh i can't believe it 
I know. It was actually kind of surprising because I played it and I was like, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like you don't want to admit how good it is, but yet it's still good. It's still good. It's still good. Oh. The other one that's kind of a surprising one, and uh, I was actually talking with some people on Twitter about this just before, is Advent Rising, how much of an underrated gem that was for the original Xbox. And it was kind of a sad story because it was supposed to be a trilogy, but the first game didn't meet sales expectations, so they just abandoned it, which kind of sucks. Mm. Yeah. But at least we have it on the Series X. That we do. That we have it. We do. So... <laughs> Uh, that was that was one of the big announcements today. Uh, I I'm excited to play some of these games like Gladius. I haven't played in forever. Uh, yeah. Max Payne I know is like a huge deal. Like I know those games, people love those games. And I might actually try them out. Uh, yeah, there's... I'm kind of in the same boat. I I never really like what I've always seen them, but I I never what? really actually got a chance to play them. Yeah, thought I was in the thought I was in the presence of gamers here. Hmm. Next thing you're gonna tell me, you guys never played the Fear games. I played about an hour of <laughs> Fear, did. and I was like, nope, pass, pass. Yeah, I only you played know, the. You first know who else one. is gonna pass? I'm gonna pass. Hmm. You know what I'm not <laughs> passing on? Time Splitters too. Hell yeah. Yeah, and Future Perfect. Oh, yeah, nice. Mm. Mm. <laughs> ah. Time Splitters 2 was better. I mean, Future Perfect was good, but... Yeah, I know, but you still, both of them, right there. Skate 2? Everybody loves Skate 2, right? Okay. That's up. People and uh, I am also in the camp that uh, I liked Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. I liked that game. Mm. Made by Slant 6, com developers, so... Mm. Was that the shooter one? Yeah. yeah. So basically you can play as like Umbrella Special Forces and then um you can play as like their Spec Ops group mm-hmm. two. So Yeah. Oh it was, okay. it was it was it was fine. You know, it was a good I, action zombie shooter. It's fine. What I wish we would get is get the uh the outbreak files again, like remastered because those were just so ahead of their time, like mm-hmm. Yeah, they really were. People, that was before anybody had a stable internet connection. Yeah. Yeah, I played them. I would play them, but I, yeah, it was like hard to find anyone to play them with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so otherwise, what else did we get from this? Um... Well, they also announced uh, a bunch of games that got uh, frame rate boosts. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about any of those games. I mean, we kind of talked about Gears, but uh... yeah, like uh, Fallout New Vegas. That's and Fallout Three. Those are going to be fan. Alan Wake, Dragon Age Origins. Um, uh, Fable, yeah, yeah. Two of the fear games, Binary Domain, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting sixty frames. A yes, second near. The game's gonna be so yeah. much better. <laughs> uh, Mirror's Edge is getting a sixty frames a second patch. The Sonic games, uh, Dead Space two and three are getting sixty frames. Uh, Assassin's Creed, the original Assassin's Creed, is gonna get sixty frames, which they, that game will probably play a lot better. Now that it's at sixty frames, yeah, probably will. Yeah, so, yep. Uh, Oblivion. So there's a lot. So we're not going to go through the whole list, but if you want to check it out, uh, there's lists everywhere. A lot of great stuff coming for you, classic Xbox people. Uh, I will be checking mm-hmm. out some of these as well. Uh, not going to lie, Final Fantasy 13, calling my name. A lot of these old games. <laughs> so, okay. So another uh, announcement. They showed the Halo trailer for the show coming to Paramount Plus. Another subscription service. I hate that, that I, I have own. to get Paramount Plus just to watch this shit. So, okay. I I already have it. <laughs> There's going to be a free trial at some point, right? You can get a free trial for one of these? I imagine yeah, I there will be. Can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we'll just do that. They had they had a um, I actually just partook in this deal because we I was I had Paramount Plus through uh, Amazon like you know how on Amazon Prime you can like add on ser- services or whatever yeah I actually canceled yeah. mine because for for two dollars more than what Am- uh, Paramount Plus costed by itself you could get uh, Showtime and paramount plus for i think it's like ten dollars a month or something like that so i ended up just switching over to that but but yeah like i don't know i i've liked paramount plus 
plus uh because you can you know you can watch the football games and stuff live on there Mm -hmm. and all all we have is like the the hd antenna or whatever for for cable so Mm -hmm. yeah so i mean i i enjoy it but yeah yeah uh, so Xbox, uh, Xbox live action TV series debuted the trailer. It wasn't much of a trailer. It was just a guy with a bunch of scars on his back. And then he put on the helmet. It was master chief clearly, um, uh, just kind of a teaser. It's supposed supposedly launching next year. I would have liked to have seen more, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, they, they look like they got the armor and the helmet, right? At least. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought it looked good so yeah. far. What we've seen, but uh, they. So they. Yeah, it's surprising that they chose to do John. You know, they chose to do Master Chief. I just, I, well, I, they, I wish Halo. You know, and and they mentioned this in the, they mentioned this in the in the presentation about how there's so many stories around the Halo universe, but we still get these mainline stories with Master Chief. You know, it's it's the same that problem that Star Wars big. has. It's small galaxy syndrome, yeah, like, is what it is. They like they, yeah, I, like. Let's, I get let's it. Start to branch out a bit. Yeah, I get it. Like Master Chief's clearly iconic, but there's so many other things that are iconic in Halo, and I think people are hungry. Like, okay, yeah, the games, the numbered games, focus on Master Chief, but like, I mean, look how look how many people love ODST. Look how many people love Reach. Look how many people, you know, mm-hmm. love that the first. Uh, the animate the animated uh, show thing that came out mm-hmm. Halo Legends. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, I still think to this day Reach is my favorite. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I got to give props. Halo Three was really good, you know, but Reach is still my favorite because I think it it, it told the story better than any of the other games to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I agree with you just because like I I almost equate Reach to like the the halo version of gears like they had they had really interesting characters you know like and they had awesome you know the awesome outfits or or uh you know armor and stuff like that and they were you know all kind of unique and yeah i i i really like to reach you know what i've played so far of it anyways because i i finished most of it but i <laughs> I still haven't gotten Man, that. you you haven't even played the end of it. The end of it was the best part. Survive. The, I know. the the ending to that was just brilliant. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, you I knew remember. what was going to happen. You knew what was going to happen, but you still fought your ass off. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was yeah. so good. I wonder what the longest uh, survive. I wonder how long somebody survived. There's got to be pretty good Halo players out there, right? That survived for like hours. You think? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't finish Reach either. Reach is the only Halo game I've never finished. Uh, But, yeah, so also they brought brought The Rock out, obviously, because he was the (laughs) – revealed the first Xbox with Bill Gates, which was just a – just a – gosh, man. That – when they showed that clip, I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is so cringy. So bad. (laughs) And that's when, like – yeah. This was like pre rock rock, you know, like he was like wrestler rock, like cool dude rock. And now he's just like super, super rock, I guess. I don't know what you call him, but they did the thing like the vault to promote Red Notice, which is their new movie on Netflix with Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot. And they're getting into the vault, the vault and you can go to Xbox dot com or whatever. And I don't know. I didn't go to the vault, so I don't really know. What I did, in. but. I did, but here's the thing. Okay, that that website, the whole that whole thing that you're doing, all it is is you basically you've got different uh, things from Xbox owned games, you know, like Skyrim and all the things that they own now, and then stuff from the movie you click on, and then it gives you uh, uh, something, you know, like a question or whatever that you got to answer, and it's it, you know it's uh, multiple choice. But the thing is, is what I was running into is some of them, when I would try to click on the answer, the whole website just wouldn't, would freeze. And it was still counting down the seconds because it's a timed thing that you have to do it in. Yeah. Well, so many people were probably on the server, right? I mean. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, it's cool. You know, like, I 
they you get like an achievement for every question you get right yeah um and then you can track all that like wh- everything that you've got right and whatever yeah but but yeah it wasn't functioning properly when i tried it so yeah uh, and then last but not least, obviously, the Halo multiplayer is available today. You can play it. You're, it's in quote-unquote beta form until the 8th, uh, and all your progress carries over to the new, the main game, uh, so you can start playing right now. So if you pre-order That's the game... That's cool. That's smart. Yeah, if you pre-order the game or have Game Pass Ultimate or maybe just Game Pass in general, you get the first Battle Pass for free. So that's cool. It's, it's uh, what is it, Heroes of Reach, I think, is the theme. And you can get yep. you can get a meal. You can get, uh, what's her name, Cat. And uh, there's one other Reach character that you could get as well in the season pass. So pretty cool. I like Emil's helmet. I will probably wear that one. Mm. But I think everybody loves Emil's helmet. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got the big, cool, kind of flaming skull that he etched into it. Yeah. Which at the did you look at the whole entire uh the whole entire uh battle pass thing? Like you get to yeah. unlock eventually the flaming like shoulders and head and all oh, that yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That used to used to be only for developers of the game who mm-hmm. had that as their Yeah, it was their, like a their, big uh, it was a big thing for Halo player. three, I remember. Uh, because when yeah. you saw that, uh, you could, uh, you could, you could tell that was a bungee developer at the time. Yeah. And then yeah. if you killed like a certain amount of bungee developers or something, you, uh, got that achievement and then you got the flaming, what was it? Recon head. If you watched all the Vidoc yeah. videos as well in the game. So that was cool. That was like a cool little Easter egg. Yeah. You get that flaming recon helmet. So. Yeah. yeah, that was always cool. Uh, but that's did I miss anything? I think that was pretty much it. That was announced uh, and shown off. A lot of lot of nostalgia. A lot of uh, yeah, wanna... a lot of celebration of its history. You yeah. know, kind of where they've been, where they plan on going. The um, well, the what was it? The three part series, the documentary. Yeah. The oh yeah, the documentary. They, You're right. Yeah, <clears throat> that sounds interesting. Like they're gonna chronicle like from the start of like just a bunch of dudes working at Microsoft talking about like wanting to make a home console to kind of where they are now. So it would be interesting to see a kind of behind the scenes perspective on how the Xbox was. And uh, I, I think Xbox as a company is very uh, honest with itself in terms of, you know, they made mistakes along the way. So it would be interesting to hear them. Uh, I, I at least get it from their perspective because mm-hmm. we always get it yeah. from like, you know, the Internet doofuses and the uh, <laughs> website journalist doofuses that say this is why they did this. And it's like it'd be interesting to get it from their perspective and see what their what their line of thinking was. Mm-hmm. And th- they've been working on this yeah. for, what, three years? Yeah, and like just so... seeing. What was that? Corey? Oh, uh, they've been working on this for, what, three years, right? Three years, they said. Yeah, about so... three years. Yeah. Yeah, I am yeah, especially I interested just... in the Xbox One era. <laughs> launch and yeah i think that, that that's the one i'm kind of curious about yeah yeah i was gonna i was gonna say yeah like or or even like if like seeing everything like fall apart like when the whole red ring stuff started happening and like because mm-hmm. you know they were stressing out major time you know like during that when that was happening and just like in a complete probably panic trying to figure out you know what what they're gonna do and you know, because that was such a big deal, and then you know, like we, yeah, like the story was supposedly that that they were in such a rush to make it or make the consoles or something, and but yeah, it would be nice to actually get the full story behind that. Yeah, yeah, it'd be it would be interesting. Yeah, sorry, I was reading this thing about Phil Spencer, um, <laughs> uh, the man, the god. Yeah. Our Lord and Savior. Yeah, he's been a he's been a great leader for Xbox. It's going to be extremely difficult to replace him as a leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the only reason yeah. why I bring that up is because uh, 
there's a thing going around that says Microsoft is pushing Xbox's Phil Spencer to think about his succession. Uh, and a quote, and his quote was clearly as somebody who has been here for 33 years, I have more years behind me than ahead of me, but the longevity of this team, the sustainability of this team, and there, there's nothing more important to me right now than that. You should, uh, you should think about succession when you think about the long-term health of the team to make sure the team is in a good place, that the culture of the company is in a good place and that we're making the right decisions on who we bet on. That has to mm. outlive me. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think Phil is good for the industry and as a whole, not just for Xbox. I think he promotes a lot of positivity. He pro he, he promotes a lot of togetherness and inclusiveness and stability. I think that you know doesn't always come with the internet. I mean, look how look how positive <laughs> the internet was around Xbox today. You know, right? Yeah, I didn't really yeah. see a lot of yeah. negativity today. Even even people who you know hate what three four three's done with Halo or our PlayStation fanboys. Like I, I, I saw a lot of positivity from all corners of the internet about Xbox today. And I think that and stems a lot from Phil Spencer and the team he's built and just who, who is kind of leading Xbox right now. And it, mm-hmm. let, let, let's admit that the internet is full of, obviously, you know, you're going to get more bad press than positive press usually the people that view your products positively don't feel the need to say anything because they're either enjoying it or they're they're personally like i don't feel like i need to pump this up i just i'm, I'm just enjoying the product but you got the the sm- the minority of the negative naysayers that will go on the internet and just blast it all day because they want to feel validated so you know, it, it is refreshing that a lot of these people that have positive memories and positive feelings and thoughts about Xbox are actually coming out to say, hey, that was great. It was such a good trip down memory lane. And this is why I love being part of the Xbox community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and like, let's also be honest, you know, like uh, part of part of uh, Sony's strategy for quite a few years has been, you know, like banking off of uh xbox's failures and and the negativity towards you know microsoft and and they you know like the, that's good business for them i mean it totally people, totally you know, worked hate them it totally worked yeah. during the xbox one right i mean with uh you yeah. know it coming in at a hundred dollars cheaper it uh you know producing some games when xbox really wasn't uh the negative negativity at the top leadership right with don matrick and and you know pushing the tv and tv 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 stuff you see that meme all the time and the connect it just yeah it was a perfect storm for playstation to overthrow xbox in the mind share of gamers right because like at that time at least in in the west xbox had the mind share with 360 right even though playstation 3 did eventually outsell the xbox but by the by that time it was over right xbox had mm-hmm. had you know had the mind share yeah. of the gamers and really just created something really special with the 360 and then really dropped the ball with the Xbox One and PlayStation took advantage of it, you know? And it's nice to see Xbox really make that comeback and come back strong, come back hard. Like, the Xbox Series X is such a great console, you know? Mm -hmm. Not that the Xbox One wasn't. and And all the while, you know, like you said, like, you know, Phil Spencer has been, he's constantly, he's not afraid to say, you know, I really loved this this PlayStation game, or I really loved this, you know, Switch game, or mm-hmm. whatever. Like he's he's not he's not taking that that yeah. negativity road. He's instead he's killing them with kindness. Yeah, he's yeah he's not <laughs> he's not afraid to to congratulate the competition, and he's not afraid to criticize his team. Right? Like there was a uh, interview that came out today where. He uh, he criticized how they handled the Halo Infinite delay last year, which is totally understandable, yeah. right? He said, uh, quote, I don't like how we did it. I don't like that we showed the game, talked about the game launching at the launch of the consoles, and then within a month we had to move the date. Like, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, yeah. that that's that's totally something that he owned up to. And, and you know, that's, you know, I think, I think the, the, 
what makes a, a good leader is, yeah, you can, you can know your strengths and, and pat your team on the back when they do a good job at also owning the screw ups. And I think he's done that too along the way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. Making those hard decisions. You know, <clears throat> like, yeah. Too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, that was not an easy decision to decide to, to uh, completely scrap, you know, Halo Infinite and basically give it an overhaul. Yeah. I but mean, they knew that they, that that's what they had to do. And I mean, it cost them millions of dollars, not just in paying their staff, but like, contractual agreements that they had with like Doritos and what energy drinks yeah. and Mountain Dew Mountain last Dew. year. Yeah. And you know, all the promotional stuff that they did with Taco Bell, like they did so much for the launch of this game and they had to push it a whole year. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd be curious. To, yeah. That'd be another thing. I'd be curious to see like what they were thinking at the time when they thought like, you know, it, it was able to come out last year. Yeah. That so much work needed to be done to it at the point that they delayed it a whole year. Like, yeah. how bad would it have been for yeah. Halo to have come out last year? Yeah. Like, but I, I also. I, I shudder to think. I shudder to think it would have been a disaster. We're talking like cyberpunk level yeah. disaster. I Probably also. Even more yeah. so because it's Halo. I also wonder if it really needed a year's worth of work, though, because, like, I mean. I wonder if it needed like six months and they were just like, well, let's just push it to holiday so we can line it up with this huge anniversary celebration we're about to have, you know, Mm -hmm. which makes more sense than, yeah, it would have been cool to launch Halo with the console, but also it makes a lot of sense to launch it at like a big, huge anniversary like this. Yeah, for sure. Not like any, any other uh, major companies launch games during anniversaries, you know, like Nintendo with three of their major Mm -hmm. franchises, but you know, yeah, right. No kidding. Hey, we're going to give you an old game again, and we're going to make you pay 60 bucks for it. Because you have that very special little spot right underneath your asshole. Oh, God. <laughs> that we're poking. Uh, Nintendo, man, they poke you. They poke you. <laughs> they do. They do. Uh, do we want to hit on anything else? I mean, there's a couple other things that we missed yesterday in terms of news. Do we want to hit on it now, or do we want to wait till next week's episode to kind of yeah let's wait till next week episode i thought i, th- I think this was uh we wanted to kind of reminisce and at least talk about the uh, showcase yeah you know in question yeah. so yeah i i really enjoyed the showcase i watched it during work and i was like like some of the presentation i like started like kind of getting a little misty eyed there man and i was like man i'm glad i'm <laughs> sitting in my office by myself because like yeah <laughs> well, it would be really it, embarrassing if just the, me was it just me or when they, you know, at the end there, when they announced, you know, the uh, Halo coming out, uh, the multiplayer, and they were all clapping and stuff, the whole team, the dude that was in the, the front uh, left, like, it looked like he was totally holding back. He had the ugly yeah. face holding yeah. back, crying there. Yeah. Like, which I, you know, I completely understand because, dude, that's, I mean, you know, that's, like, like you were saying, and when you the the second you talked about, you know, the, this uh, documentary, like I would love to just see a documentary just on Halo Infinite alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like seeing the the whole everything behind creating that. Yeah. It would be the, cool to. That had to be made. It would be cool if more developers did that kind of like a behind the scenes look. I I really like loved the God of War one, you know, where they followed the yeah. more recent God of War. Yeah, I really loved that one because I loved, you know, kind of seeing where they were coming from with a lot of the character designs and, and the direction. So it'd be really interesting to see one from Infinite, especially where their heads were at after the announcing the delay. Yeah. Yeah. The uh... yeah, because like I'm I'm a I'm a big uh documentary buff as it is like i literally will just search all the streaming services and just try to find documentaries a lot of the time because i just love watching that stuff right yeah yeah the uh i think i think the one thing that a lot of xbox studios at least at least 343 right it was like they showed that video you know sometimes you can tell when people are doing business speak and stuff and you're like yeah, we're really proud of the team, whatever. And like, it's, it's like a PR statement, but Mm -hmm. they got the, the guy that was talking about the multiplayer with the Mohawk. I forget what his name is, but I followed him on Twitter today. Cause he just like, (laughs) he looks like an interesting dude. Yeah. He just like, 
showed so much heart and passion. And I feel like, I feel like you could really see that he was really proud of what their team did with the multiplayer mm-hmm. yeah. at least. Right. And cause he was the multiplayer lead, I think is what they said. And, uh, you know, I, I like seeing that out of team leaders, you know, it was like, there's so much passion and, and heart and his emotions weren't produced, you know, from mm-hmm. a script or from a director, they were real and heartfelt. And I really feel like that sent a strong message to about the quality of this game too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like kind of one of those things that feels like where you, you see a lot of this like happen with smaller teams where, you know, these indie teams where they're like a family Mm -hmm. and, you know, and like, there's just so much heart and stuff in it. And it feels like, you know, like, like we've been seeing as these developers and stuff have been getting picked up by Microsoft that, that like, it just seems like they're genuinely happy and, and being taken care of. And, you know, and like as a person who wants to support these, these teams and support Microsoft, you know, like that's what you want to see. Yeah. And it, you know, it just makes you happy to know that they're, they're being taken care of and getting to do what they want to do, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, I think we're going to wrap it up unless anybody has anything else to say about this anniversary. So. No, I think, uh, I think we pretty much nailed it. Cool. Yeah. I, I absolutely, I didn't really say it in particularly out and, you know, but I, yeah, I absolutely loved the show. It was, Mm-hmm. Yeah, Short, it was really sweet, cool. but it was it was well done. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, not at any second did it feel like you know, like oh, here you go, you know, like like it was boring or anything. I think they did like an excellent job setting it up. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely something Xbox has done really well the last few, you know, like with E three and some of their inside yeah, Xboxes they, lately. Like, really, just they could definitely make a good stage. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that was so cool. <laughs> By the way, just to wrap it up on this, like when they launched the the video, the old head of Xbox came out on a stage that was literally the original Xbox like bubble yeah. screen. Oh, it was so cool! <laughs> I know that was awesome. I was like, wow, they did, and I, I was actually surprised. I thought they would feature that more instead yeah. of just like for or like, like a couple minutes. Each stage would be like represent a different span of the Xbox's life, you know, but. I mean, we didn't get yeah. that, but it's it's all right. It was yeah. cool. It was cool that they did that at least. Yep. Oh, yeah. it was so cool. <laughs> Man. I'm going to turn really that into was, my though. bedroom. I, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, we're going to get out of here. Our select studio. <laughs> We're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching this very special episode. You can catch Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast, every Sunday night live on twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Network. You can follow us on Twitter at Boss Rush Network with the hashtag Arsenal X. You can catch all of our other shows on BossRush.net. No housekeeping, no plugs tonight. Just want to give you our impressions of the Halo 20th anniversary, Xbox 20th anniversary, and... uh, We'll see you next time on Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast. Goodbye, everybody. See y'all next week. Bye. Bye.